Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back. It's another week. Uh, here to answer all your questions live, take some comments, whatever pops up, y'all just let me know. Uh, I kind of had a few things I wanted to talk about this week, uh, but none of them really DIY related. Um, I had a few, I don't know, I guess kind of soapboxy kind of rant things about uh, the business and uh, and everything. Just, you know, a, a few little things that I wanted to bring up in, in case any of you are looking to hire someone to do a little bit of work around your house. You know, uh, I always say that I interview my clients just as much as they're interviewing me. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is that, you know, there's all kinds of horror stories about uh, bad contractors, bad handymen, you know, somebody comes in to do a paint job inside one of your rooms or they come in to put in a ceiling fan or they come in to, you know, build a pond in your backyard. There's all these horror stories that, that all these people have and they say, oh yeah, you should totally go work, you know, get Tony to do your work because he does excellent work. And the inverse of that is that they say, no, you should never hire these people to do your work. They do terrible work. They messed up my whole backyard or they messed up and they broke a pipe in my house and, and all this stuff. And uh, so, you know, to flip that, all the contractors and all the guys coming in to do work, they have their own horror stories about super picky customers or customers who are constantly standing over their shoulder watching them while they're trying to work or uh, you know things like that you know so it, it, it's give and take it, it, just as much as, as you can find a bad contractor contractors can find bad customers so you know in any event I just thought you know to keep that in mind the next time you're looking at somebody not that you're a bad customer not that you're gonna find a bad contractor or whatever uh, just to know that the door swings both ways and that if you're, you know, a good customer to somebody, chances are they're going to be a good contractor to you. Uh, there are exceptions to, to all of that, of course. But anyway, that's what I wanted to kind of start off with, with a thought like that. And if any of you have any horror stories about any of contractors that you've hired, either do small or large jobs, inside or out, um, I'd like to hear about them. You can leave some in the, in the comments section. Um, and uh, definitely even after this broadcast this will be posted to the channel as a video so you can go back and watch it uh, you won't be able to see the comments and things like that made but I usually read people's questions and comments that are on the screen so that you don't actually have to see it and then of course you can hear my answers and, and responses to those um, so you know kind of on a side note uh, we've We've lost one of our TVs. I don't know. You, you can't see it, but over here on this wall beside the fireplace, uh, one of our TVs in the living room, the, the TV in the living room, has gone out. So we've been relegated to watching television in the bedroom, uh, which is the only other place, uh, until we can try and find a new TV. <clears throat> That's just a little bit of a you know, personal fun fact in, in my life. Uh, it was, you know, a decent sized TV. It was about a 55 inch. That's not huge, but it's not, you know, tiny either. And, you know, so now we have no common place to watch television anyway. So we've been watching it in the bedroom and I've been hooked on the new season of prison break. Uh, I was wondering if any of you guys out there are into that show. Do you watch shows? Do you care? Do you binge watch on Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that? Anyway, tell me what you think about the new season of Prison Break. I love it. I think it's great. I mean, you got these guys who, you know, broke out of, uh, you know, a prison in, you know, Yemen, and now they're fighting ISIS, trying to get away from ISIS. I just think that's cool. You know, that's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's no worse than a superhero movie that comes out nowadays, one of the 28 that come out every week. Um, but in any event, I thought I'd update you on the pond as well. The pond is coming along really well. Uh, the water clarity is awesome. The new filtration system that we have, the skimmer box. Uh, we've got a 51 gallon per hour pump and we have a waterfall box that has three different layers of filtration in it. Uh, 55 watt UV bulb uh, to help circulate the water through there and disrupt the DNA of the algae and kill it off. Uh, the fish are doing great. We have 15 fish, seven of which are koi and the other eight are shoe bunking or goldfish uh, and a 
you know, the shoe bucket and goldfish, of course, are larger than the koi at this point, but they're all doing great. They love it. They're happy. My daughter was out, you know, wading around in the pond today trying to catch the fish and play with them. It was fun. Yeah, and my wife said, I have to make her watch Prison Break. That's a lie. That's just a total lie. As soon as I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I've got it queued up, she she's into it. And then if I say, hey, babe, what you want to eat? Or, you know, what you want to do for supper or whatever. Uh, hey, is, is is it okay to go in here and use this toilet now? You know, whatever that I might bring up to her. She's like, huh? Because she's so into watching the show. She acts like I torture her by making her watch it, but that's a lie. It's a total lie. She's into it after she starts watching it. And then she knows everything that happened, and she'll be asking me questions about the episode. So don't give me that. Uh, the other show we binge watch all the time is Murdoch Mysteries. It's a CBC show, so anybody from Canada that watches, uh, that's Canadian Broadcasting Company here in the States, a lot of people are starting to learn about some of these stations. Like, you know, the BBC's been around for a long time, and, you know, people here in the States are more familiar with the BBC than they are the CBC, but uh, we've been watching a lot of foreign shows. We watch Father Brown. That's a BBC show. Awesome show. Love it. Uh, and we watch Murdoch Mysteries religiously. I mean, all the time. We've seen every episode about seven or eight times. We don't care. We love it. That's a Canadian show. <coughs> uh, George Crabtree makes the show. He's awesome. Uh, so, anyway, for you guys in the DIY world out there, if you haven't started watching either of those shows, I highly recommend Murdoch Mysteries, and I highly recommend the new season of Prison Break. They took a hiatus for a while, and now they're back. And my wife says I'm a liar. So... In any event, uh, actually, work has been a little bit slow in the way of the company. I don't know if any of you know this, but we started the business at the beginning of the year. Uh, kind of got tired of being under somebody else's thumb. I got tired of uh, empty promises and uh, unfulfilled potential that was there in the beginning of each job that I took, and it just never really worked out. And I said, you know, I can go look for another job or I can try and go out on my own. So the beginning of the year, we started our house makeovers and handyman services. Now, any of you that um, are watching this are obviously not just some casual fair weather watchers. So you're most likely already, uh, you know, getting access to the Our House channel page on Facebook and uh, Our House channel on Twitter. Um, I also have the Facebook page for the business which is our house makeovers and handyman services uh, in which you know it's it's fairly local I usually work within a two or three hour radius at the most and it really depends on the size of the job and scope and things like that uh, but anyway work has been kind of slow for like the last five weeks and just now this week things are starting to pick back up a little bit it gives me a little bit of hope uh, because it was honestly getting to a point where we're so behind on things and, and, and really losing so much money, uh, it was getting pretty dire that I was thinking, okay, well, what I'm going to have to do is take a full-time job uh, to make some sort of a stable income and at least get some sort of health insurance benefits, uh, you know, some kind of savings in 401k or something like that going on so that, you know, I'm actually trying to build something for my family and then do this our house makeovers on the side. You know, I'm just going to have to turn it into a side business. Uh, I was really at that point. And I'm not saying that I haven't come back completely from the brink yet. I may very well be still at the edge of that cliff uh, to where I'm going to have to make a decision one way or the other. But at least this week gives me a little bit of hope because I'm starting to get more phone calls now. Uh, people are starting to, you know, need more things. I don't know if it was because, you know, maybe spring break or something like that and they all had vacations planned and they spent you know whatever extra money they had on some kind of spring break trip or whatever but it's inevitable also that when the kids get out of school here uh, that most people have vacations planned for that and a lot of their money's going to go to that so I expect it to kind of die off again here in the summer um, but stay tuned I'll keep you guys informed on that and let you know you know what's going on with it I appreciate all the support that I'm getting locally and from family and friends I appreciate all the support that I'm getting on here from everybody uh, your viewership is uh, you know you, you don't even have to comment you don't have to say anything the fact that you're watching the videos uh, 
that that lets me know that there are people out there. I'm up to almost 1,800 subscribers now, which, you know, there are plenty of YouTube channels out there that have millions. But there's also a lot of them that have two and three subscribers out there. You know, their mom, their dad, and their cousin. That's the only people that's really subscribed to them. So, you know, uh, any any super chat contributions you guys make on here uh, in the last two sessions and anything that would come up in this session is totally appreciated. It, it keeps me coming back week, week in and week out to do this. Uh, so thanks a lot for your support. Thanks for sharing everything on social media. Just wanted to say that. Um, I know that I haven't really posted any videos on the channel other than these live episodes uh, each week. This is actually my third live episode, third week in a row, and I haven't actually posted any projects, and it was fully my intent to do a grout uh, instructional video and actually do that live and grout the backsplash in our kitchen that hasn't been done yet. Uh, and do that live so that you know I could show you live and answer questions and kind of explain it to you and you could watch it. Uh, but this week kind of got the better of me. Like I said, the phone started ringing again. Things got kind of busy and all that. So uh, I really didn't have time to set that up. Uh, hopefully I can get something like that going next week. And it may have to be on a special day or a special time or something like that when I have a day off. Um, and I might just end up filming it and making a video out of it and posting it and not doing it live. Let me know your feedback on that. Let me know your thoughts. Let me let me hear what you've got to say to that. Which one do you think? Should I do it live or should I do it recorded and edit it and break it down like normal? Uh, honestly, live is the easier thing to do as far as time consuming because I don't have to edit. You know, um, I just go on and stream and that's it. Uh, and then it posts as a video. But I don't get the viewership. Uh, out of these live versions right now I've currently got six people I think I was at eight people at one time uh, watching this and the last two weeks I think I've topped out somewhere around 12 or 13 views uh, people watching the stream live um, you know and this week's a little bit down who knows why it could be because you know people are like hey this guy's boring he's really not talking about anything and I haven't had a question yet so if you guys got any questions I'll be glad to answer them. Um, but I'm going to keep doing the live thing. I may, like I said, it, it may metamorphose into uh, more of a, a live project, a live build. Uh, I'd love to do something like that. Um, I would have to come up with a, a pretty good project to do a live build, and it couldn't be something that would take me three days to do. <laughs> Scott, thanks for the keep up the good work comment. I really appreciate that. I will. I'll try my best. Um, I was honestly kind of thinking about, you know, the pallet signs are pretty popular videos. Uh, I know that there's a lot more out there than pallet signs now, and pallets, they're actually, I don't know, they're kind of slowing down a little bit, you know, the pallet wood craze. Uh, but I thought about doing a pallet sign, you know, just a quickie and maybe have it kind of sort of built already and just go through and show you how I, I do some of the, uh, the lettering on them or how I transfer images to them, some of the different techniques you can use for that. So I may do that next week and just do like a one hour uh, episode on that so I can kind of show you as I go along. Maybe that'll be a little bit uh, more interesting than just sitting here staring at my ugly mug while I talk away. Uh, you know, there's there's a fine line between what, what I'm doing here live and... and uh, Amanda, thank you very much. You are not boring. You are fun to watch. I'm always laughing. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. I, that, Like I said, all these little comments and thanks from everybody, the viewership, this, this is what keeps me doing it. I'm definitely not getting rich off of making YouTube videos or going live or running a Facebook page. I'm certainly not getting rich off of running the business. So it ain't about the money for me. It's all about trying to help get my ideas out there, trying to give people ideas. And that was one thing I wanted to say about the videos. You know, in the beginning when I was starting, I was not doing step-by-step build-along videos for YouTube because there's a million of those out there. And I didn't want to have the same, I don't know, the same feel for my videos as, as everybody else has on theirs. Uh, I wanted mine to be more, hey, here's an idea, here's what I did. I'm using unique parts and unique pieces 
that you're probably not going to find anywhere. But if you try and find ways to take what I do and add to it or change it or whatever, and I've inspired you in some way and gotten something, a bug in your head about, you know, doing something, then, you know, that's that's what I was out to do. Not give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this exactly. Like I said, there's hundreds and thousands of those people out there. So, um, in the beginning, I was catching a lot of flack for that. People were really on top of me, you know. So, you know, it's, it's better now. People are starting to understand that, hey, this is not a step-by-step -step thing. This is more of a, I'm showing you what I'm doing. Maybe you can get some kind of idea from that. Uh, Brian Keenan was impressed by the fireplace stone. I used your video for help. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. That's what it's all about. I mean, this stone behind me on this fireplace, this is my fireplace. Um, I did this in a day, day and a half, something like that, I don't know. And uh, I've, I've done a lot of these. These are ledger panels, I've done a lot of these. And uh, this video is by far the most popular one of my YouTube videos. Um, and I've had a lot of people say that it helped them and you know, that's, like I said, that's it for me, that's payment for me, that's great. Um, so these are super easy. These are super easy to do. Don't be intimidated by doing these. Uh, it's really easy to do. and. You know, there's so many variations on this too. Uh, you can add a mantle. I decided not to put a mantle on it because I didn't have one. You can add a hearth at the bottom. I decided not to do that. You can also frame it in with some kind of wood like a cedar or a formal white painted wood. Jose, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, Jose? How you doing, bro? Um, so there's tons of ways to change it up and honestly as far as this fireplace box goes this is like an older box that was put in about 15 years ago uh, it's got brass on it I'm thinking seriously about painting that all black uh, just a flat black with stove paint uh, that's that's one thing that I didn't include in the fireplace video is and it's also a video I should do is that if you can see uh, I've got the gas logs here uh, they're not the greatest log set, but they're not the cheapest either. You know, it's a good, what is that, that's six logs. And usually log sets and their prices for log sets vary not only on the quality and how realistic they look, but also on how many logs there are in the set. The more logs, the more expensive. So the log set's okay. It's a good middle of the road log set. It's all right, it's fine. Uh, the fire brick panels that are in it, uh, they're nice. I've actually thought about maybe faux painting those uh, with some stove paint using some kind of black and red high temp paints or something like that to kind of make it look like brick. And I've thought about just painting the whole thing flat black inside there so that when you see the flames, the flames show up a little bit better. I honestly don't think I'm going to do that though. I want it to have more of the fire brick look, but that's an option. That's something you can do. And then as far as the box itself, the outer perimeter of the box, like I said, this has got brass on it. If you take a fine sandpaper and you just go along and kind of sand that metal and give it some teeth, just get a black stove paint. It's a high temp paint. And uh, you know, ask them at Lowe's, tell them what you're gonna do. Say, hey, you're at Home Depot, wherever you go. And just say, hey, I wanna paint the, uh, the perimeter of my, my, fire, my gas log fireplace, uh, you know, what brand do you recommend? What uh, spray paint do you recommend? And then you can tape it off and you can spray it black. You know, you might want to just do short bursts and wear a mask and turn your fan off and all that since you'd be spraying inside. As long as you're not spraying an, an absorbent amount and then maybe crack a window to get some of the fumes out, do it all the time. Uh, so there are ways to not only make the surround, everything around your fireplace look good, but also the box itself. Um, they can be pretty expensive if you're buying new ones and if you're installing new ones. Uh, I've done quite a few of those, installed them, uh, taken out old boxes, put in new boxes, converted wood over to gas, converted you know, wood over to electric. The electric fireplaces have really come a long way. Don't sleep on those. Don't sleep on the electric fireplaces because they've really come a long way. I know people hear electric fireplace and they think, oh, that's cheap. That's cheap crap. 
there's some really good electric fireplace options out there and your prices can be anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to several tens of thousands of dollars they get pretty crazy and then you can get the modern ones the, the linear that are like seven and eight feet wide and they're only about a foot tall you know there's, there's just all kinds of uh, great electric fireplaces out there and there's several good manufacturers uh, Empire Napoleon you know you name it um, so if you want a fireplace in your house and you you're like ah you know I don't want to have to call the gas company to run a gas line I don't have a gas line I don't want to do a wood burner because then you got to get it cleaned out every year and you got to actually have the wood and yada 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 try an electric it's great to jazz up a room make it look you know nice and homey and warm and uh, you can build around it you can buy pre-made cabinets for it if you want to that look like built-ins or they look like an entertainment center or you can make your own and I highly recommend making your own because anybody can just go buy something you need to get out and DIY that thing do it yourself figure out how to do something yeah, send me your questions send me your ideas do it on the Facebook page and I'll be glad to answer it there get interactive with you on there uh, anyway uh, I also want to take time to mention um, that in these live shows uh, I don't have an abundance of people on watching currently I'm hoping that it grows week and week week after week um, but the main reason that I'm doing these is to try and make a little bit of extra income off of the channel so any contribution you can click the little dollar sign in the chat window down there and you can make a contribution you can stick in a buck you can put in two bucks you can put in five you can put in a thousand if you want to it's a one-time donation it helps me out uh, because you know I'm, I'm, I'm doing this out of love but I'm also doing it to try and supplement my income so any help like that without begging <laughs> is uh, is greatly appreciated and uh, it keeps me coming back Daily useless sports trivia. Dust, my good friend James. Hey, Chad, I'm finally catching one of these things live. You rock, brother. Not as much as you and Smokescreen. My cousin Smokescreen and uh, Dust, Daily Useless Sports Trivia, which is James, and Chris is Smokescreen. Uh, those two guys get together and collab on not just one, but on a couple of projects. They do a, uh, a podcast now. They're just starting to do a podcast. It's all geeked out. If you like Game of Thrones, if you like any of the superhero comics, movies, TV shows, uh, it, Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it, anything geek like that, those guys know their stuff. I mean, they just, and especially Game of Thrones, oh my God. Oh my God. Just psychos about that show. They just know everything. They read the books, they watch the show, they, they get in depth stuff, they're, they're constantly just trolling the internet. They do uh, live shows just like what I'm doing now, and they, they do it for two and three hours, and they've got you know hundreds or thousands of viewers at a time. It's it's a really in-depth thing, and the two of them are the co-hosts of it, and back and forth banner between them is great. They really got good energy, and they do it up professional. It's a lot more than just me sitting here with my webcam and my little light to try and show some light on my ugly face, but. Uh, they, they do a really great job and if you need to find Smokescreen or Dust I'm subscribed to both of them on my channel you can go and find them through my channel or you can just do a search for Smokescreen all one word or Daily Useless Sports Trivia also known as Dust D-U-S-T search those guys out try and find them uh, yeah my wife says y'all need to go watch Dust videos pretty good James gets in there sometimes uh, on Dust and opens up old baseball cards and he even chewed the old gum out of it one time from like 30 years ago. So uh, it's amazing he's still around with us uh, after eating the gum. But uh, in any event, go check those guys out. They're awesome. I watch, I watch their show, and uh, now they've got the podcast coming out. And, I, I, you know, I don't do any podcasts. I'm not, I'm not going to get into podcasts, and I'm sorry. This is as far as my technology goes. You got no idea how much help I had to have in trying to figure out just how to go live like this and set everything up. I thought you just click the button and turn on your webcam and bam, oh yeah, I'm gonna broadcast to millions of people. No, you gotta download software, you gotta set it up, you gotta tag this and turn in that, and attach this to it and all this stuff. Oh my God, it's just a nightmare, you know? So uh, I, I should say that it's easy for me to go live, but honestly for somebody who's not a techie, uh, it's, it's kind of tough for me to go live. Uh, my cousin, he rolls out of bed in the morning and it's like, he knows how to do everything geek and everything computer, you know. 
So anyway, I, again, I, I thank everybody. I'm up to eight viewers now. You know, and like I said, that's that's less than I've had the last two weeks. But you know what? Somebody's watching, and uh, I know I, I know that a couple of the people are people that I know, and and people that uh, you know locally are involved, family or friends or whatever. But you know what? There's some other of you in there that actually get the notifications and come in and check me out, and and you share on social media, and you find me, and you watch the videos, you click like, and thumbs up below the videos, and you you know. You really helped me out, and uh, the channel has been going for a little over two years now. Uh, that being said, there's kind of an asterisk beside that because um, for six or seven months I was out of commission. I was under contract, and I couldn't get on here and post anything new. But uh, you know, so technically a year and a half worth of uh, worth of posting videos and promoting it, and I, I really haven't been promoting the channel as much on social media as I used to. I'm getting kind of slack on that. I need to step that back up. Uh, but I thought since I didn't have many questions, I would just kind of catch you guys up on what's going on in my world and uh, give you a little insight onto the channel. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to try and commit. I think I'm going to try and commit to next Wednesday at 7 o'clock uh, trying to do a one-hour show where – I do a pallet sign for you and instead of just making one kind of sign uh, and just doing one technique I think I'm gonna set it up to where the pallet sign will just be a sample board so that I can show you number one some decoupage on it uh, and some of the things that you can decoupage on it number two I'm gonna show you how I do some lettering uh, and even some logos and they all get hand painted on but there's tracing involved and I want to show you how I go about doing the tracing because I think it's a pretty cool technique if you've seen all my videos then I do have some of the videos that show you how to do that um, the different techniques but I think I'm going to do it live next week and just kind of reiterate it I think a lot of people would benefit from being able to ask me questions live about the different techniques you know so I, I think it's pretty creative the way the way we do it so uh, you should check it out. Uh, go ahead and mark your calendar. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time next week, I will be doing a half hour to one hour, depending on how soon I can get it done, show. It's a live DIY, not so much a Q&A, on doing different techniques to decorate your palette signs. Dust has a question. Question, is it easy to remove popcorn ceiling? I was told spraying water and a putty knife is all it takes. That seems too easy. Yep, you are exactly right. First of all, there's several different schools of thought, and you know, probably more than that, uh, that are actually plausible and workable. Everybody's seen the YouTube video of the guy who takes the sweeper, uh, you know, attachment, attaches it to a shop vac then duct tapes a 10 or 12 inch wide mud knife to the top of it, sprays the whole thing down, gets it wet, turns on the shop vac, scrapes along his ceiling, and magically it just all goes into the tube and it comes off like that. That, that is a very good idea. It's a very good technique and it does work. It's not a myth. Um, however, I think that your preparation is the key to making that work. I think that you actually need to, um, like removing wallpaper, you don't want to just spray straight water on wallpaper. You can, but it's not going to be as effective uh, in, in the sense of when you're trying to clean off grout and you've got your sponge and you're trying to wipe down all the grout lines to get the excess grout off to remove the haze, you add a little bit of vinegar to the water um, to help the, uh, the grout release and, and, and clean more thoroughly than it would with just straight water. So I imagine there's probably um, something that you would want to add to that water, and I'm no expert on it, but I think you would probably want to add a little bit of soap, maybe some dish soap, something like that. I don't know that you would want to add vinegar to it. Maybe, maybe not. Somebody out there has probably tried that. You can tell me. But anyway, you do need to wet it down pretty good 
Uh, and not all of those pieces of popcorn, not all of those shards of paint are just going to slide right off like, you know, a hot knife through butter. There's still probably going to be some elbow grease involved, and it really depends on how well is the popcorn ceiling put up? How old is the popcorn ceiling? Has it been painted over? Has it been painted over 49 times? Uh, you know, all that stuff is going to come into play with just how easy it is to come off of your ceiling. And there's tons of people doing that right now because there's lots of houses out there with popcorn ceilings and everybody wants flat, smooth ceilings. They want to get rid of the popcorn. That's yesterday's news. Uh, glitter or no glitter, they want it all gone. Uh, and you're still going to need to lay down drop cloths or plastic or something like that because, like I said, not every speck of that is going in there. And when it comes and falls down, it's going to be wet. And ceiling, ceiling paint is flat. And flat paint is a lot like chalk in the sense that it's very absorbent. And it can also, in its absorbency, get kind of muddy, almost soupy and stain things. So if any of that falls down on your furniture, your woodwork, uh, your floors, anything like that, it's probably going to stain it. So the preparation is the key, that's for sure. And just know that it's not all going to go through there and you're not going to be done scraping your ceiling down perfectly and go, well, that's it, we're ready to go. A lot of times also with popcorn ceilings, popcorn ceilings were all the rage because it eliminated a lot of the need to have skilled mud men. And by mud men, I mean people who come through and mud sheetrock and make it look like glass and it's perfect and they three coat it and they sand it smooth. Uh, all of that popcorn ceiling up there, a lot of times, was put up there to kind of hide imperfections. And, uh, you know, once you take that popcorn ceiling off of there, you're re exposing a lot of those imperfections. So, you know, that being said, be prepared that once you remove that popcorn ceiling, a lot of times you're going to be going back in there with a mud knife and you're going to be trying to skim coat your whole ceiling and then go back and sand it. And when you sand it, you can get this dust control stuff, this, this mud that is a dust control. Let me just tell you, I don't care how, what kind of dust control it has. When you sand something, you are removing material. You're not removing less material with the dust control stuff. It's still the same amount of material. The dust control in dust control mud basically means that it is slightly heavier. It's a little bit more dense than standard mud to put on sheetrock, which means that it will have less of a tendency to float and fly around and make its way into other rooms and go into your air register and clog up your air vents it will be slightly heavier, giving it more probability that it's going to fall straight down. That is what dust control means when it comes to sheetrock mud. So you're not gonna just go through there and say, oh, well this one doesn't create nearly as much dust. It's the same amount of dust, it's, it has to be. Maybe it doesn't break down as it is fine particulates, uh, but it's just designed to fall straight down so that it doesn't float as much and it doesn't go into other rooms. Uh, so, hope that answers your question. That's about 10 minutes on, <laughs> on sheetrock mud, and, and I'm no expert on sheetrock, so uh, that's a lot of information for me to have. You can imagine that if I'm not an expert and I can fill up about 10 or 15 minutes worth of sheetrock talk and mud, then it's really complicated. Uh, when you mud walls and you sand walls and all that, it's an art form. It's an art form the same way stonework, uh, natural stonework is an art form the same way that brickwork is an art form. When you're mudding a wall or a ceiling or even patching something in, you have to know when to stop touching it. You have to know how to work that trowel or that knife just right and taper it off this way and build it that way and when to cross hatch it and, and you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's just, it gets so complicated. In any event, that's, uh, that's wow, 7.34 already. So I put in an extra four minutes. I'm working overtime, and I, I, you know, didn't even have as many questions this time. So I'm obviously running off at the mouth. I'm going to leave you guys until next time. Like I said, next week, go ahead and set your calendars. I would not hate you if you share on social media the fact that Our House Channel is going to be live doing some pallet work uh, next Wednesday at 7 o'clock for a half an hour to an hour. Uh, Go to the channel if you're subscribed to it. I would really appreciate it if you would take just a second uh, to share that channel, share my channel link 
on your social media pages, your Facebook, your Twitter, your your Instagrams, any of that, that may just give me a big enough boost to, to make it to that next level. Any of you out there that are willing to take that two or three minutes for me and do that, I would greatly appreciate that. There's almost 1,800 subscribers. If I could count on each one of them to share it on social media, it would really help me grow exponentially. And uh, then I would put more production into the show and get more involved and try to do better shows for you. Uh, so please take some time to do that for me and go ahead and mark your calendars. I'm going to try and get a notification put up and go ahead and schedule a live stream for next week uh, a few days in advance so that it notifies you if you have your notifications turned on. Uh, if you don't, go to the uh, go to the page and you're already subscribed. Make sure you click that little bell over on the side beside where it says subscribe. That will give you notifications when I post new videos or when I'm going to be going live and when I schedule something or when I am live currently. That will help you stay in the know. So uh, go check out also Smokescreen and Dust, Daily Use of Sports Trivia. Also, my other cousin Eric, I know I'm in the South, I'm sorry. My other cousin Eric has a channel called Melton Art. Uh, he is a caricature artist, but he is also an illustrator. He has been a caricature artist for decades now, uh, several decades. He is excellent. He's top of his game at it. You can hire him also if you are somewhat local. Uh, he will travel. There will probably be some travel expenses involved, but I'm telling you, he works weddings, he works birthday parties, he works corporate functions. He's a natural. He's awesome at it. He's great with people. He's great with kids. You will not regret it. Go hire Eric Melton to come and do your character show. Or if you have ideas for books or you have presentations to make where you need illustration, call him on that. Also, he does video production. He's excellent at video production, high quality editing, all that stuff. He's great at it. Go check out his YouTube channel. Check out his Facebook page, MeltonArt.com. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, guys.